This is starting to become a mystery. It is amazing that Voyager is still on its mission to boldly travel to new uncharted territory and glance back as far from the heliopause as Neptune is from Earth. Voyager 1 is currently billions of miles outside of it and moving at a rate of around a million miles per day. Now it has just established communication with a highly developed space object. What could this be exactly? Just made contact with unknown object in space. Also, did you know that there were three Voyager spacecraft? Yeah, a third Voyager mission was initially slated, but later abandoned. Voyager 3 was allegedly cannibalized during construction. How did the third Voyager spacecraft end up? Let's find out. As Earth's first representatives to the outer planets, the twin Voyager spacecraft captivated the public's attention in the 1970s and 1980s by taking up-close pictures of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. On August 17, 1977, Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to launch into orbit. Voyager 1 followed on September 5. The Voyager twins are in many respects relics of that period. They each have an 8-track tape recorder for storing data, 3 million times less memory than contemporary cell phones, and a 5G internet connection that transmits data at a speed that is around 40,000 times slower. The Golden Record, which has greetings in 55 different languages, images of people and locations on Earth, and music ranging from Beethoven to Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good, belongs to them both. Notwithstanding the mission's recent media attention, the tiny spacecraft have kept on traveling beyond our solar system under the direction of project scientist Ed Stone. As the only spacecraft that have ever been through interstellar space, the Voyagers still represent the bleeding edge of space exploration. Despite having outdated memory and transmission capabilities, the twin probe's 1977 Jupiter flyby marked the start of the planetary encounters for which Voyager is best known. Following stops at Jupiter and Saturn, both spacecraft, Voyager 1 and the slightly slower Voyager 2, moved on to Uranus and Neptune. Voyager 1 then left the solar system. Even while the Voyagers wouldn't technically be in interstellar space until they left the heliosphere, the bubble of space surrounding our sun, all the planetary contacts ended within 10 years. On January 1, 1990, the Voyager interstellar mission formally began. In August 2012, Voyager 1 passed through the heliopause, two silent decades after leaving the outer planets behind. Six years later, in November 2018, its slower counterpart crossed that line. The sun regularly erupts high-energy particles because it is a thermonuclear fireball. The solar system is bombarded by these particles as they push outward in all directions, well beyond the influence of the planets, until they collide with interstellar particles beyond the termination shock. A broad transition zone, containing both solar wind particles and interstellar medium, is the heliosheath. This spherical-ish boundary is known as the termination shock. The heliopause, also known as the heliosphere border, is the boundary with pure interstellar space further out. The science that the Voyagers are still producing is incredible and unappreciated. Everything that we have measured in space is filtered through the solar wind, which is created by the sun's plasma and magnetic fields, and our atmosphere also filters out everything that is measured by telescopes that are located on Earth. When Voyager entered the interstellar medium, we were able to measure space for the first time directly, without interference from the sun. The amount of incoming radiation was one thing Voyager detected, and it was almost ten times more outside the heliosphere than it was inside the bubble. The Voyager missions demonstrated that the Sun is blocking up to 90% of the interstellar radiation through the solar wind and heliosphere. Despite the fact that this radiation might be fatal to astronauts, in reality, the solar wind is keeping us safe. No one realized exactly how much protection we were under until the Voyagers arrived. 
The Voyagers also found that the sun behaves differently from what was anticipated in terms of how it interacts with its border. Like north-north magnets, two magnetized plasmas cannot ever mix when they come into contact. Hence, the solar plasma and solar wind are unable to mix with the interstellar plasma. Nevertheless, there are also electrified neutral particles in the universe that don't give a damn and simply pass over the heliospheric borders blindly. They eventually have an impact on our solar environment, and we also have an impact on them. The Voyagers lack the capability to directly study these neutral particles, but missions like IBEX and New Horizons have added to our understanding of the nature of these unusual interactions throughout the heliosphere. Making some difficult decisions is what that looks like right now on Voyager. Since the spacecraft are getting older, scientists aim to extend the mission as much as they can. Yet both geographically and in the sense that these are the first spacecraft to have been in operation for this long, they are in utterly uncharted terrain. They are over 45 years old, so how they age and how long they can live are crucial factors in determining how important the remaining science is. Plutonium-238, which has an 88-year half-life, powers the Voyagers. When they first launched, that seemed to last an eternity, but now that half of that time has passed, there isn't much base power left to run the spacecraft. At the end of the planetary mission, the Voyager teams already turned off the cameras and shut off some of the instruments. It was either switch off more instruments, turn off the heaters, or lose the spaceship because no one knew if the instruments could function without the heaters. What do you do? Thankfully, the instruments have kept on producing and sending data, even as the heaters have been turned off one by one. The Age spacecraft also lacks the transmission capacity required to send a clear signal billions of miles back to Earth, making it harder and harder for telescopes on Earth to pick up their weak signals. It resembles an out-of-body, flickering refrigerator light bulb. We're talking about a signal with that type of intensity. Hence, our efforts to interact with them must be heroic. We wouldn't have been able to maintain contact with the Voyagers as they grew farther away if advances on Earth hadn't been made, such as the construction of 70-meter dishes for the Deep Space Network. Many don't know that there were three Voyager spacecraft. Mariner 13 would also have been Voyager 3 had the mission's name not been modified. When numerous spacecraft are created, it's really very typical to have one that is largely utilized for spare components and has problems. Another usual technique is to construct a backup spaceship. In any event, there would have been two trips to Jupiter, two to Uranus, and two to Neptune when there were four spacecraft. They canceled one of them since they were superfluous. They may have decided to construct all three spacecraft at that time, since they possessed the components to do so. There were growing concerns about the mission's success in the final months prior to the launch of the first probe. Tests were used repeatedly to find problematic assemblies in the AICS and FDS of VGR-772. Various anomalies were discovered at the beginning of August 1977. Despite having problems, the second Voyager, VGR-772, was utilized to make replacement components for Voyager 1. VGR-771, and Voyager 2, VGR-773, the two Voyagers attached with the RTG. Once they had successfully completed their tests and were prepared for launch, regarding the original intent, it is important to understand that the main objective of the Voyager probes was to observe Saturn and Jupiter. Voyager 2 was given an extension only after Voyager 1 made a close approach to Titan. There were therefore four options. The Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto approach would have most likely been used if Voyager 3 had been launched. Regarding the reason it was cancelled, it was undoubtedly a result of the Planetary Grand Tour's post-moon launch budget crisis. NASA judged that the route between Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto was not significant enough. They had a little moon mission budget which cost $2 billion per launch, but the 2006 launch New Horizons spacecraft did go that path.
Incredibly, these ancient probes are still in communication with Earth, but their plutonium-powered energy source is rapidly running out. Because of this, NASA recruited a group of scientists and engineers to develop a replacement mission that could continue the work of the Voyagers. If NASA agrees to construct this probe, it may launch in 2036 and bravely explore the universe for at least 50 years and perhaps much longer. This indicates that it would have by far the longest scheduled length of any NASA mission. In addition to dealing with all of the mission's personnel growing older and passing away, agency administrators would also have to deal with all of the equipment that would surely become outdated. No one could have predicted that the Voyager spacecraft would do it for as long as they did. They were initially designed to exist for only around five years in order to visit Jupiter and Saturn. Nonetheless, the equipment continued to function, so NASA added flybys of Uranus and Neptune. The tenacious spacecraft kept on and faithfully reported back to Earth. Although it appears to be empty, the interstellar medium is actually not empty. It's filled with energetic particles like cosmic rays, gas, and dust. We still have a lot to learn about this area of the universe, and directly sampling is basically the only way to fill those knowledge gaps. Assuming nothing malfunctions prior to that time, current forecasts state that the final piece of the Voyager's machinery may be turned off around 2030 or 2031. Understanding that this day would come, NASA authorities urged McNutt and his team to develop a plan for a new interstellar expedition a few years ago in order to continue the Voyager's legacy. Their suggested probe would use technology that is either well-established or advanced, and it would cost about as much as the Parker Solar Probe, which was launched at a cost of $1.5 billion. This suggested spacecraft may pass by a dwarf planet on its way out of the solar system as the New Horizons mission did on its journey to Pluto for the first time in 2015. It might pass past a dwarf planet that we are unaware of. Set aside the idea of eight planets, Pluto may have been demoted to dwarf planet status, but the truth has always been that there are many minor planets in the solar system. There are expected to be 130 dwarf planets beyond Pluto, but as we've learned through researching Pluto, they are much more geologically complex and interesting than we once thought. The interstellar probe may therefore pass by one or both of Quayar or Gongong, Gong, both of which may be geologically active, as well as another dwarf planet on its route out to deep space. The spacecraft will be able to travel approximately twice as fast as Voyager 1 and cover nearly 34 billion miles in the first 50 years. In addition to reaching a strange dwarf planet, it is entirely possible for this spacecraft to continue traveling for another century, similar to the Voyagers, and eventually reach a distance of more than 800 astronomical units, or 74 billion miles, from Earth. Although it may seem far Proxima Centauri, the star that is nearest to our own, is located some 25 trillion miles away. Yet this mega venture into interstellar space, might be useful in planning future ends that can truly travel to other stars.